Okay, so let's start by just fitting uh, ordinary least squares on the um, on the wine data set. So uh, we're going to start by using the stats models uh, package, and this is just because it also will provide all of the things we're accustomed to seeing. For example, if we run LM in in R, right? So first, just a, a um, a random thing about SATS models is that um, it doesn't automatically add the intercepts, so we're going to have to add an intercept term ourselves. This is not essential. We're really not going to be using the SATS models package all that much in this class. Um, so the ordinary least squares, uh, we just run OLS by fitting, by regressing uh, Y onto X, the X matrix now, and then we can fit it. So um, this is sort of a, a thing we're accustomed to seeing when we fit ordinary least squares. This is a summary of the regression. So we have uh, quantities like our, our, the R squared, the S statistic, T values associated with the F statistic, um, AIC and BIC. Um, we have all of the coefficients for the regression, and then the T statistic and the P value. Uh, for testing significance of each of these effects, um, and um, and then various other things, right? But again, um, when we're doing statistical inference, these are the quantities that typically we want to look at when we are thinking about uh, the significance of these effects. But in the prediction context, really we only care about what are the predictions of uh, the linear regression, right? Um, and the predictions, they take the following form. So there are some coefficient vectors. There's a coefficient vector, which we can think of it as an intercept term, beta zero. That's just the scalar plus a weighted sum of the x's, right? And so when we say that we're doing ordinary least squares with um, the linear model, then we're really restricting ourselves to predictions of this form. And that's one of the big restrictions that um, that has implications both in the inference context and the prediction context. So in, in inference, um, for our inferences to be valid, typically we are going to need that these linear models, that the linear model holds. Um, for prediction, we can think of this linear model as a restriction on the types of predictions that we're going to be able to make. Right? So any prediction that we're going to make of this form is going to be linear. Right? And so, so the, this linear model really is a, a big restriction, both for inference and prediction. Um, for valid inference, we need several other things, like homoscedasticity, um, an approximate normality assumptions. Um, and then it's also, there's a lot of caveats when we are doing inference. For example, it's hard to obtain significance for individual effects when there's collinearity of the x's. So if two x variables are highly correlated, then it's, it's difficult to um, obtain individual significance and, and just distinguish between their effects. So that's, those, are, those are some um, issues that arise in inference that don't necessarily arise in the prediction context, although um, some of these things will have implications in prediction. So, so let's think about prediction a little more systematically. So in supervised learning, the basic idea is that our learning machine, when it comes to the prediction task, it'll take a p-dimensional data and predict a y. Right? So that's the basic idea behind supervised learning. Um, so the task in this context, so going back to the definition of machine learning, the task in this context is to predict y given x. Right? Now our performance measure is our loss. Right? Um, so this is some function that is a function of our predictor, which um, in, the co in linear regression was that f beta was the prediction function that I mentioned before. And um, so our loss is some measure of loss for the given prediction function. And if it's parameterized by a beta vector, like it is in the linear regression context, then we can think of that as a loss for each data point um, on our selected betas. Okay. So some betas, if they're very bad, if they 
um, if they're if they're nowhere close to um, their optimum, uh, might give bad poor losses, and um, some might some might do better than others. Right? So um, the experience now uh, is just how we the the data we use to fit the model. So we typically think of ourselves as having some training data, which are x and y pairs, and we fit our model using this. So ordinarily squares, you can think of it as taking our training data, which we think of as our experience. It fits the model, which selects our beta. Um, so that's what OLS does. And then um, when we go to our test data set, we are going to measure the performance of our fit using our notion of loss which is typically square error loss for a regression, right? So let's, let's specifically look at this for linear regression. So there's sort of three steps here. One is we fit and we do this over training data and then we predict. So if we have a new data point, so let's think of this as Xn plus one, then we can predict after we fitted our betas. So we like to write hats for things that are um, data dependent um, that are that are dependent on the fit. So beta hat is the fitted beta um, from ordinary least squares, and f beta hat of xn plus one is you know assuming that we saw another data point on top of our training data. Um, what would our prediction be? And that would be y hat. And it's very critical that we make this prediction without knowing what y for xn plus one is. Right, so we should be able to predict only knowing the predictor variables for the new data point. Right? And uh, for linear regression, it takes the following form, which is our beta naught, our intercept, plus the uh, weighted sum of the, uh, of the variables, of the predictor variables for the n plus first data point for the new, for the new uh, sample. Now, after we've done our prediction, now if we do observe a response variable, so this is yn plus one, then we can measure our loss, right? Um, and so this loss typically in this case is square error loss. So we just see how far from the true yn plus one was our prediction, right? Um, and, and we do that using the difference and squaring that difference. So you can sort of think of this as a game where you are, you as the person who's doing the, the learning has access to some training data, right? So you then fit uh, your beta hat using ordinary least squares, right? So now you're ready to do any prediction. So any new predictor uh, vector that um, the other player, player two or the universe throws at you, you can make a prediction because now you have a beta hat. So you do that. They give you a new xn plus one. You predict y hat using f sub beta hat. And now, um, now you present that, that move, your y hat, to the other player. And the other player says, aha, but this is my yn plus one. Right? And now you get to see how far from their yn plus one your prediction was. So that, that's the game, that's the, sort of the context in which we're doing linear regression. If you had access to yn plus one, then you wouldn't need to predict it at all. You could always just spit out the yn plus one. Of course, you cannot have access to the, to the, to the response variable if you're predicting it. Okay. So um, I think this is a good time to do an exercise. So I think you should look at um, the documentation for training test split. So we talked about how you fit on your training data and you uh, predict on your test data. So, I, um, so we need to be able to split our data into training and tests. Um, also look at the linear regression documentation. So this is both within scikit-learn. Um, so for linear regression, it's going to create an object that has the fit method and the predict method and you want to fit on your training data and predict on your test data. Um, so we're going to start by using this training test split to, to split the wine data set into two parts, just do a 50-50 split there. Then uh, use linear regression, this class, to fit, um, to fit on the training data and then predict on the test data. And then at the end, 
Now that you have your y hat for the test data, compute the average square error loss. So this is just look at what the square uh, differences are between the predicted test y's and the actual test y's, and then compute the mean of that. So uh, here's a good time to pause, uh, try this out, and um, and then we can then you can just see if uh, if your answer answer matches mine. Okay, um, so now I'm going to give you the solution, my, my quick solution to exercise 1.1. So if you haven't already done it, just pause the video and, um, and go back and, and complete that, that little exercise. Okay, so we still have to import the training test split. Now once we do that, um, this is the interface for training test split. It takes your X and your Y X is a, is a two-dimensional array, Y is a one-dimensional array, and uh, you specify the, the test size to be 50%, which is 0.5, and then it spits out the X training, the X test, the Y training, and the Y test. <clears throat> now we have to initialize the linear regression object. You don't have to specify any arguments for the linear regression object because it fits the intercept by default. Then you fit your linear regression on the training data. So now what, it, what it's going to do, it's going to compute um, the ordinary least squares solution, and it's going to save the betas. Okay. Now uh, you take your x test, your test x, and you predict uh, on your x test. So now after you've, um, so critically, this fit procedure did not have access, did not use at all the test data. So now um, we're thinking about that two-player game. Uh, you're given now the test X's and you predict using the test X's. But of course you are not able to predict with the, um, with the test Y's. Right? So uh, we can compute our mean square error. And this is the, um, this is just the, the square difference of the predicted y's against the test y's, and then take the mean of that. Okay. So uh, if we compare, so, so you can get your MSE, this is something like 0.414, um, and to get some point of comparison, it's useful to look at the variance of the test y's. That's um, almost as if we were to predict the test y's with just a single value instead of uh, using the x's at all. This isn't quite right. We really should be computing the square error difference between the mean of the training y's and the uh, test y's to, to actually get that. And we also know that in linear regression, the um, the ratio of quantities like this on the on the training set these quantities on the training set, uh, that that can give you your, your R-squared value. So it's reasonable to compare the MSC to the variance of the of the test-wise. Okay, so that's that's the quick answer. Um, you know, notice that there's very little documentation here, but it's it's very short and very easy. Um, so this this should be. Uh, this, this shouldn't be too hard if you're familiar with Python.